my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, every Friday, you are addressed the same way as brothers and sisters in Islam. That is, if you attend here. That's not a mere formality, by the way. But it's an intended reminder. A reminder for each and every one of us that our faith community is family. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what means the believers are but brothers. Brothers and sisters in faith, and oftentimes, more times than not, it is the relationship that we share as believers that can be stronger than blood. So what does it mean to be a community, a family based on faith? Family, to most of us, it means support. The Prophet wasallam was reported by both Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim to have said, Al-mu'minu lil-mu'min kal bunyan. The believer one to the other is like a building, like a structure. يَشُدُّ بَعْضَهُ بَعْضًا Supporting each other وَشَبَّكَ بَيْنَ أَصَابِعِ He clasped and interlocked his hands. A support one to the other. When you think of family, this is what you think of. I can rely on family. Whether you're a father, a son, a mother, a daughter, a brother or a sister, you know that your family will be there for you. They'll be there for you when you need them, and they won't expect anything in return. That's family. So when we begin saying, my dear brothers and sisters, it should serve as a reminder that that is what we are to each other. We only choose to remain strangers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us that إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةَ The believers, they're brothers. But it's us who decide to stay strangers, one to the other. It's us to determine whether we are a weak family or a strong family. Family is important in Islam. Your, your, your family by birth from the greatest deeds is to join the ties of kinship, but also your family in faith. It's important that you are strong. How do we strengthen our family? How do we strengthen and support each other? We are to be looking for the opportunity. Family looks out for each other. They look out for each other. They watch. They're familiar with what's going on in the lives of their loved ones. That's a good family member. They keep up with each other. They know what's going on. If you got a new job or you just had a child, if you've fallen ill and you're in the hospital, if you're in financial need, they stay up with each other, not just so they can have stories to tell each other, but so that they can help and support because they care. They care for each other. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Al-Muslimu Akhul Muslim, that the Muslim to the other is a brother. They don't oppress each other. They don't turn them over to destruction. The Prophet wasallam he said that whoever 
helps their brother while they are in need, then Allah will help them in their time of need. Whoever can relieve their brother or sister in faith of hardship and burden, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will relieve them of a hardship or burden on the day of resurrection. The Muslim does not expose the faults of their fellow Muslim. And they try to hide and conceal their inadequacies. This is family. This is what family does. They try to help, they try to console, they look after, they protect, and they defend each other. This is who we are. Communities, families, because human beings, as you know, are very social. We are social creatures. We need each other. We need each other. And it's a need which is greatest during our most dramatic events. Not only do we need someone to be with us in our successes, to share, to enjoy, to congratulate, and to encourage during the easy times, the good times. We need people. It may seem like everything's all good, but you know if you're going alone, a success alone, it's not the same as having someone around to acknowledge that and to encourage. We also need each other during times of difficulty, especially our most difficult times, our lowest times. We need someone that can be there in our times of sadness and loss to show us sympathy, to support us, and to remind us that things, they'll get better. In an article entitled, Offering Condolences, this was published in Psychology Today, Dr. Phyllis Silverman, she said that nothing is more upsetting than saying nothing. When someone's going through a difficult time, especially the loss of a loved one, a family member, a friend, someone close, you see that the worst thing you can do is be silent. Sometimes we don't know what to say. It's awkward for people. And a lot of times people going through such loss, they are embarrassed. They're embarrassed from their tears. They're embarrassed from their emotions because they know it can be a burden for others. So sometimes they pull away. They may try and isolate themselves. Those feelings, they need to be acknowledged. People like to have their sadness recognized. But what do you say? How do you get past that awkward moment? Should I say sorry? Should I offer advice? Should I ask about the deceased? How did it happen? What's appropriate and what's helpful? This was the, the gist of the article published in Psychology Today. Condolences are certainly effective and can be extremely helpful. And believe it or not, as people of faith, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a guide to us and legislated the manner of condolences. We know, as it says in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ There has come to you a messenger from yourselves, عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ Surah At-Tawbah, he continues and says, Grievous to him is what you suffer. 
He is concerned over you and to the believers is kind and merciful. The Prophet Sallallahu was stricken with grief when the believers were suffering. In their sadness, in their loss, in their difficulties, the Prophet Sallallahu was sympathetic. He was compassionate. What the community suffered was very difficult for him to deal with. So it was related. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, I have been sent with the lenient and straight way, a soft way, forgiving way. The religion is easy. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, has been reported in Sahih Bukhari. So we find that the nature of the Islamic legislation we find that the nature of the law in its entirety is simple, tolerant, all-inclusive, and easy to live by. Not only is it easy to do, but it makes your experience easy. It makes your life livable and enjoyable. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man of compassion and sympathy, his teachings are very broad and they address a wide spectrum of issues, including the role of community in supporting its members at times of loss. We've discussed previously tools that we can use as individuals to get over feelings of sadness and loss at our most difficult, lowest times. Tools that we use ourselves but it is important, a critical factor in recovery, that the community is there to support those enduring pain and loss. Community plays a huge role. The Prophet ﷺ expressed great encouragement to offer condolences. And he provided us with the words to say, when we are often at a loss of words. He instructed us what to say. The Prophet Sallallahu also encouraged us. Numerous hadith, the Prophet والسلام, was reported in Sunnah Ibn Majah. He says, مَا مِن مُؤْمِنٍ يُعَزِّ أَخَاهُ بِمُصِيبَةِ إِلَّا كَسَهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَ مِنْ حُلَلِ الْكَرَامَةِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Listen to these powerful words. He says, there is not a believer who consoles his brother or sister for a calamity during their time of hardship except that Allah will clothe him in garments of honor and nobility on the day of resurrection. What a great reward. Great rewards are given for great deeds. If it wasn't important, it wouldn't be mentioned like this. If it was insignificant, it wouldn't be attached to such an honorable and distinguishable reward that Allah will dress you, clothe you in honor on the day of resurrection. He was also, alayhi salatu was salam, reported in Sunnah ibn Majah wa Tirmidhi, he says, Man azza musaban falahu kamithli ajri. Whoever gives condolences to someone who is afflicted and tried, then they too will share in the reward of the one going through it. someone that goes through hardship and bears it with endurance and patience, Allah is with them. And Allah ma'asabirin. You will share in that reward of being patient. It's recommended to give condolences to a Muslim. Whatever the age may be, whether they're young or old, within three days of someone passing. A Muslim grieved by another one is to say, أَعْظَمَ اللَّهُ أَجْرَكَ وَأَحْسَنَ عَزَاكَ وَغَفَرَ لِمَيِّتِكَ Three words. Three words. Phrases. May Allah magnify your reward for enduring hardship. Make your bereavement perfect. Acknowledging the difficulty 
of what they're going through and forgive your deceased. And also acknowledging the loss and praying for those who have passed. This is a short exchange. The one who hears this is to respond. استجاب الله دعاك ورحمنا وإياك May Allah have mercy and may Allah answer your prayer and have mercy on us as well as upon you. Very short words, a quick exchange. However, you can acknowledge the sadness. You can acknowledge the sadness and loss of your brother and sister with these words. You can offer them a mindful reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That their reward is with Allah. Their patience is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their bearing the hardship is for Him azza wa jal and you can pray for their deceased. It's also done in a timely manner. The fuqaha, the great scholars of this deen, they talked about three days. Within three days for those that are present. Because it's timely. It's most needed at the onset of hardship. It's something you don't put off. That means you have to be in tune. It means you have to be involved with your community. You can't be isolated off out in the, the oblivion of dunya. But you have to be tuned in, plugged into your community to know what's happening, to offer the support that is needed in a timely manner. Hey, I heard you needed help last month. You good? Yeah, man. <laughs> that was a month ago. Oh, I heard your father or wife or husband, your mother passed away. Are you okay? Yeah, that was last year. Where were you? Right? Too little, too late. And also, beyond three days, it does nothing but perhaps unearth buried feelings. To bring them back through the experience again. It can be painful for people that have gotten over the loss. Short, Powerful and timely. I call you Holy Hada, was thou for Allah and he welcome what he said in Muslim in a man could lead them, was thou for who in the who who will go for Rahim. Smilla will hamdulillah, Hamdan Kathir on Tayyib and Mubarak and Fee Kama Yahibu Rabuna, where you are bought. ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. My dear brothers and sisters, as you know, Islam is built upon prayer. It's built upon fasting and charity. Islam it places a great deal of emphasis on self-development and spiritual purification. There's no doubt in that. But it's also a religion of compassion, community, and service. The Prophet وسلم, was sent as a mercy to mankind. Not a mercy to himself. That he would be guided him alone. That he would enjoy the fruits of faith by himself. But he spread that message. That was his charge. To spread the message to mankind in its entirety. Because community is important. Whether we're talking about our small community here, a larger community of the region, of the nation or of the world, it has a significant role in each of our lives as individuals. The Prophet ﷺ, not only did he provide guidance 
to ensure the salvation of his followers in the next life, but his teachings offered mankind the tools needed to live a good life here and now. Our Prophet ﷺ had a positive impact that goes without saying. What he contributed to the world speaks for itself. It doesn't require defense. Speaks for itself, as does the historical contributions of the Muslim community. They speak for themselves. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his legacy, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, led to significant developments, not only in religion, but also in science and mathematics and architecture, education. The list goes on and on and on, and we are very familiar with those things, and we should take pride in them. There are exhibitions, there are books, there are shows that highlight the contribution of the Muslim Ummah to the world, not just to themselves, but to everyone. We should take pride in that, but we cannot let it make us complacent. We can't live in the past. What they did was for them. We benefited from it. The question is, how are we going to impact community? What positive influence are we going to have? Even if it's just a few words and a positive reminder in someone's most difficult days. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reported to have said, after having been asked, who are the most beloved people to Allah and what are the most beloved deeds? He said that the most beloved people to Allah and fa'ahum linnas, the most beneficial to people. The most beloved to Allah are those who are most beneficial to mankind. They have a positive influence. They leave a mark. And the most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sururun tudkhiluhu ala muslim. Happiness that you can give your brother or sister in faith. Or that you remove some hardship, that you pay for them their debt, that you remove hunger from them by giving them food. These are beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَلَإِنْ أَمْشِ مَا أَخِنْ لِي فِي حَاجَةً He says, for me to walk with my brother in his time of need, to help him out, أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ أَنْ أَعْتَكِفَ فِي هَذَا الْمَشْجِدْ شَهْرًا More beloved to me than making it to calf in this masjid, that was his masjid for the duration of a month. Just to help out to make someone's life easier, to make someone happy, to give someone food in their time of need, something simple. It goes a long way, longer than the actions which are for you and you alone. This is a principle in Islam. We can find this theme runs throughout the teachings of our faith. The best of you are those that learn the Qur'an. And then they teach it. Our faith, it asks us to not only take care of ourselves, but while we're doing it, to look after for others. This is the legacy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A person may say, you know what, I don't know anybody in need. It means you're not looking for the opportunity. It means you're not as connected to your community as you should be. Because I'll tell you this, there is always a need to be filled. There is always something that can be done whether it is on a large scale or a very, very small and almost seemingly insignificant scale. 
The opportunities are there. And I'll tell you this, the time is now. The time is now to make an impact. If we were ever in need of leaving a positive mark on our community, it is right now. So, as a proud announcement, many of you have been informed of this, but in case you're not up to date, following in those footsteps of our great predecessors, offering service to community tomorrow is the beginning of a very positive initiative to offer free health care, preventative health care to the community at large. A number of your community members, many of them sitting with you today, have been working diligently, organizing, planning, raising funds and executing so that this would be a reality. So that tomorrow, the first of the month, in the morning from 9 until 1230, we will open for the first time Cherry Hill Free Clinic. This is something to be proud of. This is something to be proud of as a part of this community, the South Jersey Muslim community is taking real steps, not just talking now. The time for talking, it has come and it is gone. It is now the time for doing. This is day one. And bi-idnihi ta'ala, there will be many days to come with this initiative and with your skill set. Listen. We as a collective group here have a lot to offer. Part of the problem is we don't know each other well enough to know who can do what and how they can contribute. But I'm 100% positive that if we knew each other well enough, we would be shocked and surprised and a little disappointed that we haven't been living up to our full potential as a community. To make an impact, it has to be all together. This project isn't a one-man show. Projects that you may be thinking about or interested in, we're here at the ready. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in this life and bless us in the next to relieve us of our burdens and to make our way easy as we journey to Him and the home of the hereafter. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa akhru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqimis salah.